I spent years as a, a woodworker and a writer building up my shop. It kind of dawned on me that the stuff wasn't going to make me a better woodworker. The skill comes from the person and not the objects. Yeah, anarchism is a hard word uh, to to talk about these days. Maybe I shouldn't, <laughs> uh, because the concept, if you talk about the concepts behind it, most people will say, yeah, I get that. But when you say the word, oh, well, that's anarchism, they think you are this kid you know, who throws bombs on the top of McDonald's and you know, melts down ATMs and stuff. My first tool purchase was a, a coping saw. I was you know, a young, nerdy, woodworker. We had Sears on one side and Ace Hardware on the other and I just kind of was trying to comparison shop so I was riding my bike across back and forth picking up the coping saws and trying to figure out which one I should get. I settled on the Craftsman, the Sears one, and it was a total piece of junk but it had a shiny handle and I think that's what attracted me to it. I didn't learn my lesson and I had a block plane from Walmart uh, chisel from I don't know where, and it was all crap. Then when I, I got a job at Popular Woodworking Magazine as a low-level editor, that really sort of introduced me to, you know, what nice tools were. Because we were a magazine and we reviewed tools, we were like force-fed this diet. They would just send us tools, like really expensive tools, whether we asked for them or not, hoping that they'll end up in the back of a photograph in the magazine or that maybe we would review them. I was spoiled. I had access to all the tools. I think Chris probably mentioned that we used to get them sent to us on an almost daily basis. Uh, I knew which ones were crap because he told me and other editors. I never had the huge problem with acquisition of too many tools that most people who get into woodworking do because I was told not to from the get-go. <laughs> I mean, I wrote this book called The Anarchist Tool Chest for my 11-year-old self, that kid that was riding the bike back and forth. Aesthetic anarchism, uh, which is American anarchism, is very distinct from European anarchism. But the ideas are that there is property. You are entitled to your tools, and you are entitled to the fruits of your labor. So it's not socialism, it's not uh, communism. It, it is very much basically like medieval pre-capitalism. <laughs> I mean, everybody is their own thing. Uh, it eschews large organizations. It's really just about being human scale. You go through and you look at all the tools that they had in the 17th century. This is the 1600s and it wasn't very many. <laughs> and that's kind of when it dawned on me that maybe I was doing something wrong. You know, that, that maybe I didn't need, you know, the gizmo-tastic dovetail cutter 2000 to do everything. The tool is just a crutch to some extent. I don't need a better tool than the one that I have. If I had that saw, I would not cut better dovetails. It would just look better in my hand while doing it. That's really it. You, know, you need about 50 tools, hand tools, to do, build almost anything. And that might sound like a lot when I say 50, but that's not a lot of tools. One of those tools is a knife, and one of those tools is a block plane. A couple of those tools are chisels. They add up pretty quick, and they all fit in a box. Uh, that was the historical way that people built furniture for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And it is uh, sort of a self-limiting object in that the way I put it is if it doesn't fit in there, and there's only so much space, then I probably don't need it. And so uh, it forces me to make choices about uh, what's important uh, because I'm not in it for the tools. I love the tools, I'm in it for the furniture. Does the 50-year-old tool do the job it needs to do? Can I make it 
do the job it needs to do? Do I want to fix it up to do the job it wants to do? If the answer to any or all of those is no, then buy the new tool. But if the answer to any of those is yes, then stick with the one you got and save your money for the wood that you're gonna buy to use it on. I'm, I'm a much happier person just because I'm not, uh, I don't like clutter <laughs> um, and having a bunch of tools that just stacked up everywhere uh, or st having to build storage for them. You know, I just have that, that box and open the box every morning, build something on the bench all day, close it up in the evening. Um, it's just, it's psychologically, it's really nice.